Well, g'day. Hamish here at Groove in the Moo. I'm here with Matt and Joby from the Bronx. How yes, are you? Yes, sir. What up, planet Earth? Now, I've been doing some research. You guys have been to Australia 43 times now. It's uh, official. 57. 57 times. I missed 14 of those tours. I apologize. <laughs> what keeps you coming back? Uh, the, uh, the atmosphere, the people, the food, the beaches, the shows, uh, the music. It's, it, we love it here, man. I it's, think... I think it's a, the, the people actually like us in this country. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's a lot better to play to, to people that like you than that don't like you. Germany, this is true. Germany, we're looking at you. <laughs> that is true. Now, you played three sold out nights at the Annandale the yeah. last three nights. You could have done one big show. Why didn't you just do that? Because we've done, the yeah, last couple of times we were here, we've done like the yeah, big day outs and sound waves and stuff like that. And, and we wanted to come back and. You know, for people who have to pay like a festival ticket to see, you know, two bands they want to see and 30 bands they don't want to see, we want to come back and just do something different and play some club shows along with play places that we've never played before. So that's why we're doing Groove in the Moo and as well as doing like small club shows in the major cities, you know. So we're really stoked this time around. It's, it's, it's awesome. And the Annadale was unreal, man. It was, it was a madhouse. I bet you guys got a special <laughs> connection with the place. You shot a DVD there, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was our first sold-out show ever. Ever? Yeah. Ever? Yeah. It was like nine years ago. Yeah. I, I personally like smaller shows. I don't. I kind of feel like a like a monkey in a circus at at the bigger shows. The smaller shows are way cooler to me. But I would continue to do that for the rest of our band career if we could. Yeah. Yeah, well, you can't. I, I know. I want arenas. <laughs> I want arenas. Arenas. That's coming soon, I'm sure. Yeah. But um, I saw you guys at Soundwave when you were out here a couple of years ago. Yeah. I saw the Perth show. You had a special guest on stage for that one. Do you recall? Who oh, was yeah. it? A little skinny chap from Pennywise by the name of Fletcher. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Fletcher. I mean, he's it, Fletcher is an amazing friend of ours. He went off that night. And he, yeah, he, you know, it, you know what's funny is, like, you, we have friends. We have a lot of friends. Who, you know, we're, we... You know, I don't want to sound like a, you know, kind of like a D-bag saying this, but we do, like, we kind of have an, an extraordinary life, and we're stoked, and we get to meet a lot of crazy people. And, you know, like, a guy like Fletcher is such an amazing individual, and when a guy like that, you know, does something like he did, and then, like, I've never seen him with puppy dog guys, you know, and, like, the time I saw him back in the States after he came on stage and cut himself up, he came back, and he saw me, and he was like, I'm so sorry, man. Oh, you know, like, I'm so sorry. And it was like, oh, dude, it's all good, man. It was crazy. It, it was crazy. I, I mean, was he, he was tossing us around like rag dolls. He was bleeding all over me. It, it was, I mean, it was, it was beautiful. And it was amazing. But I, I just want to make sure he was okay because he was cut up pretty bad. It looks like he got bit by a shark when he pulls his shirt up. It's pretty amazing. I mean, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's I, something else. It's like a Candyland map. <laughs> I saw the whole thing. It was uh, it was not pretty, but you guys seem to tolerate it pretty well. Anybody else would have gotten dragged off. No, no, no. Was, you know, those are our friends. You know, it's it's all good. You know, every, everyone goes crazy every now and then. I, to be honest with you, it's kind of uh, it, it's kind of cool that you can play music that inspires someone to lose their mind in that sort of way. You know. It, it, Fletcher is amazingly double mic. Let's double mic him. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> this is very important. Uh, Fletcher is an extremely intelligent, awesome dude. Yeah. I really like him. And uh, I, I, I have to admit, I was a little terrified <laughs> when someone slicing themselves up, but I was kind of pumped. Now, I also just recently had a look at your latest video. Which features strippers, you know, and that's pretty rock and yeah, roll, but there's yeah. a little twist on the uh, old stripper theme. Yeah. We've been obsessed with male strippers now for quite some time. Uh, you know, we've been trying to come up with our own identities. Uh, we actually have stripper names. Yeah. I, so, what are your yeah. stripper names? Make believe. I was Mr. California. Mr. California. You know, which is pretty good. You know, it's not bad. I got a couple finishing moves. One's called the Hurricane. But, you know, <laughs> that's... That's later. That's Can we have a demonstration? No, 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 no. I can't. I, literally, I mean, it's not safe. It's not safe. Especially but, for television. Yeah, yeah. We're insured. It's okay. But that video was unreal. I mean, we, we've been wanting to do a male stripper video for a long time. And the greatest part was when the dudes actually came in. You know, they got, they got like their suitcases, you know. 
and they come in. They yeah, got like drinking like four locos. Yeah, they were they were they, were they were like in their little back room getting wasted, and but they they killed it. They were awesome, you we've know. Had them, we've had them like open up shows for us, like they come out and I gotta I gotta admit it's a little uncomfortable. There's, There's a like, lot of cocoa butter. Yeah, I, and we were hanging out backstage, <laughs> and I guess in the stripper world you're just naked, and there was this dude. Just yeah. Polishing, every, every, Polishing his job. Everything hanging out. Like, I was talking to him, and I just realized he was completely naked. And he's like, hey, man, you got my briefs? You know? Yeah. And I was like, I can't. <laughs> we actually you lost know? fans with that video. We had people oh, like, no. I can't believe you guys were stooped so low. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you've described to me the uh, pre-gig ritual for your uh, male strippers. Yes. Which involves some cocoa butter. Do you have a similar ritual before you go on stage? Uh, it's no cocoa butter uh, pre-show, unfortunately. We just kind of spend time together and talk. And yeah, we just hang out. We're kind of, we're kind of like, like girlfriends. Yeah. It's not very exciting. It's like an episode of Sex in the City backstage. <laughs> you know, we've got our bags. We go through what we bought. And we just, you know, we just have a good time and we gossip. Compare, they, compare you know, shoes. They, 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 they easy, you know, it's, everyone wants to believe there's this wild and crazy mystery about what happens before a show. We have our own things. I mean, we we have we get before before we hit the stage every time we get together and we send it out to something special that has to do with where we're at or what we're doing or or what's going on in our lives. And that's kind of the 30 seconds that we have before each show, where it's just us to kind of center ourselves and, and, and outside of that it's just we hang out we we make fun of each other and we drink beers and we have a great time sounds like a lot of fun yeah, it's, it's a blast it, 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 I, I, <laughs> I think it would be horrible if anybody saw what it was like backstage with our band it's pretty fun it's, we, you can paint a wholly fictitious picture right now if you'd prefer to do that Dude, we, we are the lamest guys in the world yeah squares yeah total squares it's not so still sitting on twitter backstage and all yeah. that yeah if nah. there's not internet backstage, we don't play. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> no Wi-Fi, no show, people. <laughs> there's no free t-shirts, we don't play. Yeah. You're out with uh, the Bronx Four. Yeah. Can we expect another mariachi album anytime soon? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the next thing on the list. We're, we have about 10 songs. Yeah, give or take. yeah nine um, or 10 songs. And we're as soon as we get kind of off this touring cycle we're, we're gonna go back in the studio and um, kind of get that next one going I'm, I'm really excited about it too it, it's uh, the demos feel pretty next good. level and uh, really exciting to me I'm a studio rat so you know I probably like being in the studio more than being at home this is a very exciting place for me and and uh, I can't wait to make another record and it's uh, I'm, I'm really excited about it I think it's gonna be fun yeah, cool. And is there one of you guys that's particularly into the Mexican music, into the mariachi, or we're all come pretty, about? we're all pretty, you know, pretty well invested by now. You know, it's like, but the cool thing is, is that you know, it's it's it, as much as it is a, a love for the music and culture. It's also, um, you know, knowing that what's what's cool about what we're doing is it's kind of our version of it. You know, so it's like we we, we try not to overthink it and just yeah, have a good time. A, there's a massive like like divide in in the Mexican community of of people that you guys aren't playing traditional mariachi well exactly like why would we do that there's the, because mariachi music is a lot like classical music there's people that like just play the same songs and you know who can like who can do the better version it, is pretty much how that world works and you know that's you know I, I feel really weird about doing that probably because I'm white and um, so it's, 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 kind, of, own songs it's kind of our take on that. And then, you know, there's there's like a, a whole side of it that like really, really supports that. And there's like, thank you. Somebody's finally come and doing something new. And then there's people that are like, you're not playing the classics. <laughs> I was like, yeah. dude, how many how many times you want to hear Sadito and Lindo? Like, <laughs> it's, like it's a great song, but not not our style. Not our style. Fair enough. Well, I enjoyed it when I saw it at Big Day Out. It was the first time I'd seen it. It was amazing. Know, man. Yeah, Big Day Out was crazy That's for cool. El Bronx. It was so much fun, man. It was so much fun. We had some wild, wild shows, man. Yeah. Awesome, awesome time. It's Killer Show. Well, thanks so much for being with me this afternoon. Hey, thank you. You guys put on Killer Shows. Every- yeah, good job, Joe. <laughs> well, you nailed the interview. You nailed the interview. Nailed the interview.
Nailed the interview. Laid that down. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Absolute pleasure. Keep coming back to Australia 58th, 59th time. Absolutely. See you then. <laughs>